Australian truckies often work up to 72 hours a week and are now driving bigger rigs to try to make ends meet. I've seen a lot of people go backwards out of this industry um, and I've seen a lot of pressures it's caused on their family life, especially when you're paying the rig off. Now a new and unexpected threat to Frank and other truck drivers is coming on fast. Last year, this driverless truck in the US became the first to make an interstate delivery. It travelled nearly 200 kilometres on the open road with no one at the wheel. No human, that is. The idea of robot vehicles on the open road seemed ludicrous to most people just five years ago. Now just about every major auto and tech company is developing them. So what changed? An explosion in artificial intelligence. But Frank Black won't have a bar of it. I think it's crazy stuff. You've got glitches in computers now. The banks are having glitches with, with their ATMs and uh, emails are having glitches. Who's to say this is going to be perfect? And this is a, a lot more dangerous if there's a computer glitch. There always need to be experienced people on the road, not machines. Frank is going to explain why he believes robots can never match human drivers. OK, then, let's do it. But Frank is off to a rocky start. Driverless trucks in Rio Tinto mines in West Australia show productivity gains of 15%. Frank needs to break every five hours and rest every 12. Oh, and he needs to eat, and he expects to be paid for his work. Robots don't need a salary. Trials also indicate that driverless vehicles save up to 15% on fuel and emissions, especially when driving very close together in a formation called platooning. And at first glance, driverless technology could dramatically reduce road accidents because it's estimated that 90% of accidents are due to human error, such as fatigue or loss of concentration. Robots don't get tired. But hang on, Frank's not done. He's about to launch a comeback using 30 years of driving experience. If there's something, say like a, a group of kids playing with a ball on the side of the road, we can see that ball starting to bounce towards the road. We anticipate that there could be a strong possibility that that child will run out on the, on the road, you know, after that ball. I can't see how a, a computer can anticipate that for a start, and even if it did, then what sort of reaction would it take? Would it, um, would it say, swerve to, uh, to the left, swerve to the right? Will it, will it just break and bring the vehicle to a stop? What about if it can't stop in time? In fact, right now, a self-driving vehicle can only react according to its program. Anything unprogrammed can create problems, like when this Tesla drove into a roadworks barrier after the human driver failed to take back control. And what if some of the sensors fail? What happens if something gets on the lens? The vehicle doesn't know where it's going. It's true. Currently, heavy rain or fog or even unclear road signs can bamboozle driverless technology. And then there's the most unpredictable element of all, human drivers. Stupidity always finds new forms. Quite often you see things you've never seen before. That's why there are no plans to trial driverless trucks in complex urban settings right now. They'll initially be limited to predictable multi-lane highways. You also still need a human right now to load and unload a truck. And a robot truck won't help change your tyre. If someone's in trouble on the road, you usually find a truck here pull over and make sure they're all right. Finally, there are road rules. Australia requires human hands on the steering wheel at all times, in every state and territory. Hey, Frank. You won the race. One for the human beings. 